Okay, so this is part two of two, um, of the, uh, making of a book. Uh, I left off on chapter two, okay, where we, where we didn't, we left off right before chapter two on page 82. Um, we learned about the early printing press, so I'm just going to pick it up right where we left off on page 83. Um, in mind, we're going to talk about modern publishing, okay? So chapter two, modern publishing, page 83. Authors and agents. Authors are people who write books. They begin the publishing process by creating manuscripts. A manuscript is a completed piece of writing. It may go, go through many drafts and revisions before it is ready to be submitted to a publisher who will buy it and turn it into a book. Literary agents are helpful because they have contact with publishers and can determine the best way to present an author's work to them. Part of an agent's job is to convince editors or publishers to buy an author's manuscript. An agent may send out a sample or an early draft to publishers to get them in to offer a book contract, which is an agreement stating that the publisher will pay the author for his or her work. Sometimes when the author gets a book contract, the publisher will give him or her an advance, money paid to an author before the book is even complete. An advance helps the writer finish the manuscript because it provides an income while the writer works through the writing process. Agents may also represent the author in pay negotiations, in meetings about how to package a book and promote it to the public. Finding the right agent is not always easy. The relationship between an agent and a writer is a special partnership. The agent has to be interested enough in the author's work to want to sell it, and the author has to trust the agent to represent him or her well. Okay, page 84, Editors and Marketing People. Putting a book together is like putting together a puzzle. All of the pieces need to fit perfectly. And editors are the people that make, who make sure what that they do. Editors work for publishers and they perform many tasks. Some choose manuscripts or ideas to purchase, while others come up with ideas themselves and then search for the right authors to create manuscripts from scratch. Most editors work with authors to make improvements to manuscripts by suggesting revisions or changes. Even after a manuscript has been purchased, an editor may ask an author to delete some parts of it or expand others. Sometimes an editor will ask an author to rearrange or even rewrite the manuscript. An author and an editor collaborate until both are happy with the end product. The manuscript then goes to a copy editor who fine tunes the writing by correcting problems such as grammatical errors and repetitive sentences. A copy editor will also check facts so that faulty information does not end up in the final printed book. Editors aren't always only concerned with the words on the page, however. They also think about how to persuade people to buy and read those words. They get help from the marketing department. People in the marketing perform research and have a lot of interaction with customers so that they know how to make products appealing to buyers. Together, members of the editorial and marketing departments brainstorm ideas about how to make the book appealing to customers. Marketing people might make suggestions about cover art, pricing, and in-store shelf displays that will best showcase the book. They also might suggest when and where the, to set up events for the author, such as book signings. Okay, so there's a lot goes into making a book. Um, as you guys could see, um, a lot of it is, comes down to editing, uh, stuff that you guys do even in class for your morning work, editing, making sure the sentences are right. The authors make mistakes too. Um, making sure sentences don't repeat themselves. Um, and then you have the marketing department who is obviously trying to sell the product just like any other product that is, you know, being sold out there. So they want to make the cover art, the, the cover of the book look most appealing, that someone's going to want to buy it. 
the store locations, autograph signings, all that they coordinate. So a lot goes into making a, you know, a book um, that people don't see behind the scenes. Okay, let's go on to page 85. Artists and illustrators. Editors will also team up with artists and illustrators. Together, they decide which kinds of images to be on the cover and the inside of the book. They look for the right style that will complement the text and appeal to readers. Book cover images need to suggest what the book is about and catch the consumer's eye. Some books include photographs rather than illustrations. Editors find appropriate photographs for the book and get permission from the copyright owners to use copies of them, or they hire a photographer to take new ones. Artists design how print appears on the page. They decide which font or which type style a book should have because each font has a different personality. Artists choose, also choose the size of the type and decide how to arrange the words on the page. The words need to be easy and pleasant to read. Readers oft, don't often notice good design, but a poor one can make a book difficult to enjoy. Graphic designers and printers. Finally, the words and pictures are complete, and it is time to make the actual book. Graphic designers use computers to set the words into type, add the images, and make sure everything fits correctly. Because designers are actually able to do a lot of their work on computers now, changes are much easier to make than they were several years ago. The graphic designer makes copies of the pages so the editor, the author, and artist can check them. The team makes sure that all the images and the words are correct. Then the graphic designer prepares the book for the printer. Printers produce the final books. Printers usually, usually are separate businesses from publishers, but the two work together. The printer helps the publisher choose the right paper for the book. Printers no longer use the printing press from long ago. Today, they use computers to print books. The printer uses computer files from the publisher to make metal printing plates. The plates are treated, then treated with chemicals so the ink sticks only to the words and pictures. Then a mechanical press puts the ink on paper, make, making a printed page. Printer makes as many copies as the publisher wants by using large printing presses. Presses may print on large sheets or huge rolls of paper. Presses are noisy, so workers must protect their ears so constant whooshing and clanking sounds are muted. The printer sets up pages, so book pages so they will be in the correct order after the paper is cut and folded. Special machines fold the pages in sections and glue them together, creating a book binding, while another machine adds the cover to the book. The book is ready to be shipped to the bookstores, libraries, and schools. If a book is to is expected to be a bestseller, bookstores may ask the printer for thousands of copies before the book is officially released. Uh, as you guys can see, a modern printing press, uh, there's a picture at the bottom of page 86. It's a huge, looks like a huge factory, a huge operation, okay? So it's not like just like they're printing it off of a regular printer that you and I would see, or even like that we have at the school. It's a huge, um, operation and special for printing large uh, scale books. Okay, on page 87. Once the book is published, the selling process begins. Marketing people plan the book. Marketing people, uh, it's a team of people that market the book. Um, it's, it's their job to sell as many copies of the book as possible. So marketing people plan the book's pub publicity. They want as many people as possible to hear or read about the new book. They might publicize a book by sending advanced copies of it to reviewers who write about the book in newspapers, magazines, and on the internet. Kind of like um, critics uh, review movies. They get to see movies before they actually come out. This is the same kind of idea. For additional publicity, authors often travel to different places to give readings, sign their books, and talk with readers. Many authors also have their own websites or blogs. They, all, they give updates about their new books and share information about themselves. They hope that people will be interested enough to buy and read their books. The publisher salespeople speak with bookstores and libraries to convince them to buy copies of the book. 
Bookstores and libraries order the books they want from the publisher's warehouse, where the books are stored before shipping. Once the books are on the shelves, readers can buy a copy at the store or borrow it from a local library. Okay, so then on page 88, it kind of goes, re goes over the um, process of publishing all over again um, with visuals. So first, the, uh, at the top, writers create the manuscripts. Then agents help writers sell their work. Editors choose manuscripts and help writers improve them. Then the photographers and illustrators create pictures. Marketing people decide how to sell the book. Graphic designers combine words and pictures to make the pages. Production people figure out how much it costs to manufacture the book. And then the printers print, cut, and bind the pages and put on the cover, put the whole finished product together. Books are then shipped to the bookstores and libraries. So it's a whole process all the way from the beginning and it all starts with the writer uh, writing their original manuscript. Okay, chapter three, beyond hard copies. Audiobooks. Many of the books you could read in hard copy are also available as audiobooks or ebooks. Um, well, ebooks is the second uh, example they give. With an audiobook, people can read while on a bus or a train. So this would be like on a CD if you, um, or an MP3 player. Um, with an audiobook, people can read while riding the bus or train, exercising or doing some other activity. Audiobooks also allow people who are visually impaired to enjoy the text and stories that are not available in large type or braille. And braille is a raised font for people who can't see and it, um, they feel it. Um, to read uh, the story. Uh, Ebooks, uh, which is very popular these days and becoming more popular. By 1999, many books were published both in print and as ebooks, available with the click of a computer mouse. In 2006, the e reader, a portable device that stores books and displays their text on a built in screen, was introduced. Today, people can read ebooks on e readers as well as personal computers and smartphones. Creating ebooks has become a very popular way for publishers to share their content with readers. The future. In the future, there could be even more ways to publish books. As the popularity of ebooks grows, publishers are changing their processes and even the ways they which they acquire and sell books. They are also seeing an increase in sales. People enjoy being able to have digital copies of their favorite books that they could take with them anywhere. Of course, there are others who will always be in love with the feel of the book in their hands as they turn the pages. For now, readers and publishers will have the best of both worlds. Okay. Um, for Dig Deeper on page 90, uh, that's an assignment I wanted you guys to do. Um, this is sequencing of events um, in an informational text, such as the mark making of a book, Authors may organize ideas according to the sequence or time order which events happen. Authors often use dates and single words such as first, while, after, and finally to help readers understand the sequence of events. Paying attention to the order in which events occur helps you understand where one event or group e events fits into the overall structure or section of the text. Look back at chapter one. In this chapter, the author describes the earliest forms of books. What text evidence helps you know how ideas and chapters are organized? How does the chapter fit in the overall structure of the text? So it wants you to find three events from chapter one and explain these events and how it fits in the overall um, structure of how this story is organized. Okay. 